You guys, I am so excited for my guest today because I've been trying to get her on for a very long time and it hasn't worked out, but hey, quarantine works very well. So let's welcome Petra Conti. How are you? Hi, I'm, I'm good. I'm at home uh, trying to stay safe and healthy and, you know, trying to relax and be positive. Well, you, you have kind of an interesting, you've had kind of an interesting, I'm going to say like six weeks or so, because you were performing with Los Angeles Ballet. You're a principal dancer there. Yes. And um, you got injured, didn't you? Yes, I got injured uh, at the beginning of March, right uh, after the whole like performance week finished with Los Angeles Ballet. So I was very lucky to get injured after. Well, that's the good. Whole, you didn't yes. Do performances. No. Um, be, yeah, it would be a, uh, like, it would have been a mess because I was the only uh, like principal dancer dancing the three uh, ballets uh, in, in the Balanchine program. So it was just everything about me. It was like kind of the Petra Conti show Balanchine edition. So uh, <laughs> thank goodness I was, I was good. Uh, back then so they didn't I, I have really any understudy could. so had you been injured there was no understudy no <laughs> like there, there there were girls that were uh, doing other parts in the ballet so and we didn't have any extra dancers so it would have been impossible to make the switches probably <laughs> all right so tell us how you got injured because I know that you know injuries and dance they do go hand in hand but they're never welcome ever <laughs> no uh, well I probably I was really just dancing too much and push, pushing too much uh, that that week before the one where I, I was performing I had uh, three shows three full like three ballets every night plus two days of rehearsals so, so like I danced for five days like a full leg ballet but it's kind of balancing you know it's it's hard on, on your legs on your hips oh, on your knees on your ankles it's not just like a regular like Swan Lake classical type of ballet, you know? So I probably, yeah, pushed too much. And then uh, once we finished that well, a week of shows, we got back uh, into the studio and started rehearsing Sleeping Beauty, which is completely different style and technique, you know? So I guess I was just like the transition from balancing to proper classical, that was probably what uh, made it worse, so I started doing all those balances in the Rose Adagio with the man, and it's on on the right knee, you know, balancing, balancing forever. And after two, three days of this kind of different work than what I was doing before, I just, I, my knee got stuck. Like suddenly I was doing like a stretch at the beginning of the class, before starting the class, uh, one day, like on Wednesday, the third day back, you know, after the big program. And I was like seated in a, a how do you call it? Like a frog position, Yes. <laughs> yoga position, you know, yeah. Buddha. Yeah. And, and then I tried to stretch my knee and it couldn't go like it, it was stuck. And so I, of course, went right away to PT, like, you know, just walking like <laughs> physical therapy, <laughs> physical therapy right away. And, and Suzanne Thom, we have a great physical therapist and she said you have to go right away to the doctor we have to do an MRI right away because I'm worried this is not like something you know it's not like uh, a little sneak or a little sprain or something no no so I was like oh my god I never had any knee injuries before I I, I didn't know that it could like I always thought my knees are like strong and pointy and kind of you know made to to survive Mm -hmm. I never, I always suffered like for, from ankles or back pain, you know, feet pain, but any injury that like, uh, it's like, in, like not on the knee was, it's, you know, uh, I never had that before. And I was, I was worried. I was like, I don't know. I, I cannot stretch my, my knee. I cannot walk properly. So I was like <laughs> walking like that. And we went, we did the MRI right, right away and it ended up being, a problem with my fat pad. So my fat pad in the knee uh, was really angry and was really inflamed. Yeah. Yes, and swollen and, and thank goodness it's nothing worse than that. So it could have been, you know, so many other things. And um, yeah, but it's still like an injury that it doesn't go away 
that quickly you know it's it's a long process and since i cannot take medications orally you know the doctor said i take uh, all the like uh, ibuprofen or like you know other stuff that normally we can take for inflammation mm -hmm. i cannot take those because they had uh, i have a history of, of cancer so now i have to be really careful because i have a kidney cancer i have to be really careful what to uh, take uh, when i'm in pain so i would rather take something like put something locally than take it orally and so that's also slowing up the healing process Whew. and then you know coronavirus happens and in some ways it's good because you can yes. you're not missing anything i feel so lucky to be injured during this this times because if i was in shape i would have gone mad by now probably you know just trying to stretch at home work at home doing some bar here i would be you know devastated because when i'm in shape i like i need to do stuff and now that i know that i'm injured i am kind of taking it easy and slowly um and i'm not worried that i have to call, come back right away because there's nothing uh planned now everything has been canceled so i'm basically waiting for my body to to heal and that's a good thing because I, I think dancers and even when yes. I I would oh, it's push through the pain I got oh yeah it. it's so bad for your body <laughs> yes yeah I would I would completely by now probably try to restart and you know push it through but that that's not what is what what the healing process is meant to be you have to actually rest enough so that your body just recovers we can push through and yeah that that's what we normally do and finally i can have time to uh to just listen to my body you know it's a good thing how about the um sleeping beauty season for los angeles ballet has that been postponed or canceled or right now we're okay oh everything is canceled it sleeping beauty has been postponed to next year to summer 2021 so all the dancers are at home and uh, I had also many other things uh, as a guest principal dancer around the world. I have, I had so many things canceled also like just for me. So uh, honestly, like I am now unemployed <laughs> for, I don't know how long. And what I was going to do this summer is is dancing at the arena in Verona, for example, where every show every night is it's fifteen thousand people watching. So I guess this year we we will not have that because you go every summer. I don't know if people know. Yeah, that. I go every it. summer, and it's, it's, it's like the, photo. the yeah. <laughs> yes, it's the biggest stage, open air stage in the world. So it's amazing to dance there. And 15,000 people watch you every night when there's a show. But this will probably not happen this year because of the virus. And people will be not only afraid to be together, not only not allowed to be together, but also I don't think there will be any tourists, uh, like tourists leaving their houses and, you know, traveling. It's it's just so detrimental for artists and for, for you know for all of us in this business, you know. Uh, yeah, and you've spent a lot of time in Italy, obviously. So uh, yes, I, I'm sure you know people who are affected or just they've been stuck in quarantine a long time. Can you give us an idea of what Italy has been like with some of your friends? Well, um, it's so quiet on the streets. There is no one and. Just some people on the balcony singing like every day, you know, they they try to connect uh, with with the other houses, you know, with the neighborhood, just trying to sing and cheer uh, themselves up. But uh, it's really hard. Uh, nobody can, can go out of their homes unless they have, you know, a certification uh, that they are going just to get groceries and they, they have to like kind of write down, I understand what I'm, what I'm gonna do, like what the, uh, um, how do you say? The risks. Uh, the risks are of me leaving the home, you know, you have to be 
kind of uh, in charge of your own, you know, responsible for your own health. And then that, that's kind of hard because people are already staying in houses. This is almost the third, fourth week now. And some, some of the people I, I talk to, even the family we have in Italy, they're kind of going crazy, you know. I'm going uh, it, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <We're> it, <in> <laughs> LA. <laughs> yeah. Some of them are getting used to it and some of them are, are really going crazy. Uh, so I don't know. I, I think everybody's different. It depends on how big is your house, how many people are in the house. That That's also like something. And of course, if you have a garden, if you have like a bigger space outside that it's yours, that that's great. But if you live in a, like a building, uh, you know, small apartments, that, that's a mess. That, that's a problem. And your family, some of your family mm -hmm. members got stuck in LA because they were in from Poland. Is that correct? Yes. So, <laughs> so my mom and my grandma from Poland, and they flew here to, to stay with me in Los Angeles for, for just two weeks when I got injured for, for, for my knee. So I wanted their help to, because I couldn't even work. I would walk. I was, uh, you know, with a, crutches uh, and then with a cane <laughs> so I was like you you need to fly here and help me and so they were very happy to to fly here but they didn't expect it to become like a endless uh, <laughs> trip because uh, the flight has been cancelled and as as far as we know they're gonna stay here with us in this in this home for at least until April 30th uh, you know, until until my birthday, which is April the thirtieth, until like for. for <laughs> that's so our last like, okay. day. After the fingers crossed, it's our last day in quarantine. <laughs> yes, I I really hope so, and yeah, I'm I'm really sorry for them because it's it's really bad to be stuck in a place that it's not your home, mm -hmm. you know. But of course, we're we're family, so it's great. Yeah, it, it's kind of a nice time to be together because I'm not really busy, so I can be with them. And normally when I am with my family, uh, it happens so rarely and, and I am so always nervous because it's, it's during like a show week or I have some performances coming up. So, so I, I don't have really time to spend some quality time with my family and now I have. It's great. So it's been great. Yeah. And your husband's outnumbered. It's all the ladies in Eris. <laughs> it's all the ladies in Eris and our... Uh, we have two cats, one one boy and one girl. So it, it's Ares and the boy cat. <laughs> he has one member of his team. I love it. <laughs> yes. So yes. great. I know our cats are actually loving quarantine because they're like, yes, buddy's home and touching yes. us and picking us up. <laughs> yes. They, they, our cats love it too. They're like so happy everybody's at home. So that, that's great. <laughs> I'm glad they like it, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I was just thinking like the last time I saw you, it must have been last fall before you did your performance, Petra Conti yes. Friends. That concert sold out yes. extremely well. Um, do you have plans now? Because I know you, you had some big plans. Uh, yes. To all of the world. So uh, the Petra Conti show 2020 was supposed to happen at the Walt Disney concert hall july 17th of this year no and, and now is it, it's canceled so i just two days ago i just spoke with daniel or uh, daniel Sung, the orchestra director for like we, we collaborated with him with the dream orchestra and he said i'm sorry but for now we had to postpone it but don't worry all the work that we've been, we've been doing for it because of course we it's it's months of work airs is producing and trying to choreograph and thinking about music and costumes. We were like so stressed about it. It's like a big show because it's not like at the zipper hall like last year. This year was supposed to happen at the Walt Disney Concert Hall, which is a completely, you know, it's a big thing. Beautiful. It's, it's huge. So <laughs> I was like, oh no. But the, the like as Daniel uh, Suk said, don't worry, all the work that we've been doing, uh, we will continue doing it and we will bring the show, you know, on stage once this is over, this crisis is over. So we are not, you know, hopeless now. We, we, we still uh, work for it and think about it every day. And it's just going to take longer to, to happen on stage. 
Well, you'll be even more prepared when it does happen on stage. That exactly. is a nice thing. You won't be maybe yes. about costumes and everything else because you'll have time to just breathe into it and relax and have it all out. Exactly, exactly. And this year was, too hot. you know, last year it was just me and three, four boys on stage plus the orchestra and some singers and opera singers and musicians. But this year it, it was like a whole bigger format. So uh, we're going to have more dancers on stage. Uh, we were planning to uh, have some LAB dancers, Los Angeles Valley dancers perform with us. And I'm really sorry because that was that was work for them I was offering and now I can't. So that's really sad. But, uh, you know, it's it's not gone forever. We're going to do it once this is all over. Yeah, we always have to, we have to keep up hope on all of this, understanding that this is just temporary and we'll be able to move forward. Yes. Soon. Um, I, one thing I love when I talked to you last year about this was the fact that you were, you're a big proponent of live music. Um, yes. Live music for dance. And unfortunately, here in LA, uh, for whatever reason, we just don't have that luxury as much when it comes to ballet. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, a, I, it's because I come from Italy and, and I've also started in Russia and, you know, it's my, it's my thing to see, to have a theater with an orchestra and, and dance for, with like a live music, you, you know, that's, that's how I've been, I grew up, you know, uh, uh, so here in a, like, for example, with LA Ballet, we have the luxury to have an orchestra just with, at the Dolby Theater for our Nutcracker shows. Because the other theaters are just too small. Mm -hmm. The ones where we perform in, they don't have even an orchestra pit. Oh, yeah. Yes, we yeah. have, right yeah. away we have the people. Like it's so, it's so scary <laughs> to have like a drop and, and see the faces so close. Uh, but that's the reality of Los Angeles, I guess there are many theaters like this. And, but uh, for my show, for the Petra to show, the first thing that was, uh, you know, was planned is of course collaborating with an, a live orchestra and have it visible so it's not just the dancers it's the dancers that dance and the music that plays and the dancer that does music and the music that does dance you know it's like this this connection which is it's energy i mean it's it's natural it's uh we we start dancing because we hear the music you know that's that's what makes us dance so i guess like have a life orchestra live music that that's like the greatest gift for us and i guess also for the audience that's wonderful yeah, yeah and i i just love that you know what you were so um passionate about it and i just thought you know that's a great gift even to all of us audience goers in, in la because we just don't get it as often yes 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 so, so um probably we need to start performing in bigger theaters and you know that but that that's another problem that's behind that, you know, like the, will the people come? Yes, they will come. But like how we make sure that we uh, can uh, rent a theater, you know, it's, uh, I, I cannot speak on behalf of LA Ballet, but I guess uh, that that's the real problem is, is the booking the, the right theaters, you mm -hmm. know, so, come and for, people. yeah. What? Yes, <laughs> yes. You sold out your first show, so um. yes. And and if, I don't know if you know, but the Walt Disney Concert Hall is like a, a theater, like a stage in, cent in the center, and then there is like people can can watch from from all around, basically. Yeah, so in the theater the in the exactly. So it's a concert hall. It's made especially for music. So the sound is great and we're gonna have the orchestra right very close to us we would be just like three little steps above the orchestra oh, nice. so it will be so visible and yeah and and we will have we're planning on having some fun moments with the orchestra as well during the show i don't want to spoil anything but like <laughs> we even wanted to have like a a moment with Ares is doing crazy lifts with me, like patted us stuff or, you know, and then throwing me <laughs> to the orchestra. <laughs> yeah, just, <laughs> so I hope that's going to be, that's going to be possible. We have to talk with the, with the <laughs> dream orchestra, but yeah, we want to make a, like a fun piece also. It's, uh, it's going to be a, a very, a very interesting show. Uh, we promise that we have a lot of time to think about, so we have to make it great. <laughs>
Oh, I can't wait because I, I I did miss the last one. I'm definitely gonna be yes. the next one. I yes, uh, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> I will let you know. You'll be the first one to know when we do it for I real now. That. Yeah. Now I do love that you um, spent some time in my hometown and where I train, Boston Ballet. Um, yes. Principal dancer, you and Eris over there. Um, talk about your time in Boston because I, uh, even though I don't get back to my city that often, I, it is a great city for the arts. Yes. Yes, I, I mean, they're definitely, they have, uh, for, for an economic and standpoint, of course, Boston Ballet is stronger at this moment uh, in terms of, you know, bigger company, bigger sponsors, you know, it's a whole bigger institution, in, uh, like compared to Los Angeles Ballet, which is small and recently established. Uh, so... Uh, of course, uh, you know, there's so many more principal dancers, there's so many more solists, and everything is bigger. The productions probably are, are uh, much more, you know, numerous than what we do here in LA. Um, but I found out that, like, working there for four years, I discovered that uh, besides the young students, uh, that normally study in Boston because of their universities and there's so many great universities in Boston. So they would come to watch the show, right? There is not much, I would say, passion mm -hmm. when it comes to the audience. It's like the, the audience has to come because it wants to be educated and it wants to look, uh, you know, uh, uh, I don't know how to say it, but it's here, not I, in, in New right. England, there's a lot of old money there. And yes, exactly. There because it's We're an elitist art. It's an, el an elite thing to do. And here in Los Angeles, I found uh, that the audience is quite diverse, and people just come to the shows because they're they want to see something, just because they're excited and not because it's like an elite thing to do or like uh, it's because I I have a status so I can go. It's just because they want to go and they want to, I guess because it's a city for where like they go to the movies and, and instead of going to a movie one night, we go to a ballet, you know, a ballet show. So yeah. it's, it's different. I, I'm interested to hear your opinion on this too. Um, I interviewed um, ABT, American Ballet Theater's Christine Shevchenko and you know, they're always out here um in orange county and she said compared to new york audiences she said she loves west coast audiences because they'll applaud like for they're you know, so five pirouettes. <laughs> yes yes they're kind of uh, warmer and, and like more i don't know fresh i don't know uh not fresh but they're like excited about everything whether in the in boston people would be like really polite like <laughs> okay at the end of the show they would applaud you know be kind of quiet about it and here people get more you know uh, emotional uh, with everything yeah we just went yeah. to see abt's um world premiere of love and rage that they did and the audience like the whole, we went premiere night and people were like woo like every show yeah. every leap every pirouette I mean, <laughs> yes because it's entertaining to hear people excited about dance yeah and, so, and we love that for us for dancers to hear that when when you're dancing it's great it's like <gasps> Oh my God, they, they like it. They love it. You know, whether like in Boston, sometimes it would be, oh my God, is there some bus? A anyone there watching anyone? us? <laughs> so it was like, oh, they're very, uh, very serious and like very focused. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's, it's different, you know. It's interesting different. though that the, the, the two different styles of audiences and how they approach dance, I, I think that yeah. just makes me laugh. But it, it was fun to experience it and really see people just go nuts over yeah. some lifts and things like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's it's good. It's good. It's it's fun here. Yeah. Um, you've been very open about um, your battle with kidney cancer. You were at Boston at the time, which has some of the best cancer hospitals in the world. So. Um, how many years out are you in remission at this point? How are how do you feel? Does it make you more in tune to your body after something like that? Well, this is going to be in May. It's four years mm. since my surgery. So, and actually I am very, I, I feel very lucky. I'm very blessed because my doctor recently, the last appointment, I have to do appointments every, uh, visits every six months. Mm -hmm. And, uh, she said that, 
I uh, look so healthy right now that I don't have to wait the five year in oh. remission period. So I can already say that I'm like, I, I'm a new person and I'm, and I'm healthy and I, it, it's, it's been in the past. I have a history of cancer, but now I'm, I'm, I'm good, you know? That's wonderful to hear. I mean, what, I mean, obviously I know you take care of your body and that, you know, you always think about health. Um, but yes. it's so wonderful to hear those words from a medical experts. Yes. yes. <laughs> it's such I cannot a imagine. I, it makes, it just made my day and it, it kind of keeps me so happy every day. You know, that, that feeling of I am healthy again. I am, I am, I have, I can, I have a new life now. And that's really, that's really something I am. I feel really blessed and uh, thankful for, for, you know, the second opportunity I got at life. Oh. And, and that's why, uh, okay, now I'm injured, but uh, every time I, I am like in shape and I have to work now, I, I work in a different way. I dance and I, I dance on stage, but I also like, I approach ballet and my job differently. I have a whole new and refreshed passion for it. I, I don't complain as much as I used to do, you know, from pain, from tiredness, I just keep pushing. I am trying to be a, a motivator, like a motivating person for the younger, you know, company dancers. And that, that's quite something to see, uh, to see them, uh, hear them say, oh my God, Petra, you're, you're the queen. How, I don't know how you do it. How can you still stand on your legs after such crazy rehearsals or such crazy shows like you're you're a beast you know and that's that's like give that gives me so much you know extra energy to hear that feedback from the people because that's that's what I'm trying to do I'm trying to show everybody that you know you just need to be healthy and when when you're healthy when you feel that your body can push, then you really have to go for it. You can't be like, oh no, today I don't feel like it. I have to uh, go easy, slowly. Just live every day to the maximum. And that's my motto, like make every day count and make something out of it, uh, you know, and that you want to be remembered for. It's, it's like something, you want to leave something to, to others. It's like a legacy you want to leave behind. And that's how I live now. Uh, my, my whole, you know, it's my whole new way of living. It's a new lifestyle. Like I got, like, I, I am not the weak Petra anymore. The one that I used to be, I am the strong beast now. <laughs> You're a warrior. I mean, that's it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Um, and I like this new me. I, I like this very much. I love my new self much more than the one, the old one. Yeah. And the, uh, the old one was kind of uh, passive, you know, and, mm -hmm. and always scary and uh, uh, scared and always like very emotional, but also in a negative way. And this new Petra, it's, it's just like uh, a bomb, you know, it's like a positive, uh, energetic person. And yeah, a, a motivation for others. Like I try to to be an example for, for younger dancers. Uh, that's my sure biggest are. goal. Yeah, because I only know you as Strong Petra, so yeah. <laughs> you were, there's no way, like I can't even see it. Um, yeah, no, yeah, I was completely different. It's amazing. Yeah, I was completely different. I was, I was really like in my own like, little shell and always like uh, being like very, very weak, a very weak person before. And now I'm, I'm really not that person anymore it's amazing yeah. it's so amazing yeah. um i know you have big goals with the petra conti show but i know when i also talked to you and eris you guys had goals of really expanding ballet into the film and television world and i know i know that those plans are still in your head and you guys want to execute yes them. yes we have big plans and some big dreams uh so aries uh for example he is kind of yeah, what I didn't tell you is that Ares was supposed to end his like official ballet career during the Sleeping Beauty with Los Angeles Ballet. Mm -hmm. So they had they prepared for him the last like big show, you know, the retirement show. And unfortunately, this is not going to happen 
now that the show is canceled. Is it gonna uh, so, here? what? No, 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 no. Eris is is uh, is done with like staying in a company for like whole season. He's yeah. he's older than me. His new projects is is really going for something else. He will probably still dance partner me like in some guest scenes or in the Petra Conti show with I hope so I don't know let's see but he wants to be uh he wants to produce shows he wants to be on the other side now which is great because now we are you know I have a great feedback from him and I you know we can still talk uh he's not gonna be on my side so much he's gonna be on the other side you know the stage but, uh, and, and also we want to bring ballet into the movie industries and we want to, it, like Eric is very interested in the, in the movie interest, industry as well and in the production, uh, you know, area of not just theater, dance, but as well as movies and, and all kinds of, kinds of stuff like that. You, so we hope to, you know, put every all our knowledge together and experience and uh, make something big out of it. Well, we will see. We have big plans. I cannot really tell you because uh, <laughs> they said that if you if you tell uh, those those you know plans, they they were gonna fly away. Go so, away. <laughs> yes. Well, so just the thought you put it out to the universe and the universe gives back. There's also that opposite theory. There yes, yes. <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll when you're ready. Now, yes. Uh yes, you will know. You will know. And also we were trying to because we we have so much experience. So from my side I want to of course continue to uh coach the younger generations. Mm -hmm. uh, so I want to still do that and I'm still doing that uh, you know when when things get better with this virus I hope to to push more towards like master classes open classes and eventually some you know some kind of uh, uh, regular regular ballet classes with me and Eris loves to teach as well. He's he's and he's the master. He's my teacher, my coach. So he's actually better than me. But he has also other things to think. So I don't know. We we have so many different um, ideas and things in our heads. I don't know. Well, I'm looking it's, forward it's to all, the yeah. Next time when you guys are teaching at LA Ballet is like open community class. Yes, open community it. class. You have to come. You can you can take my class. You really really it's I'm so fun. If you're in the be like advanced beginner class, I'll be there. <laughs> yes. So uh, I I teach the advanced, but there are people that come that have all eighty years old. There are people that come that have eight eight years old. You know, like uh, it's a very mixed and open class, and and it's not really advanced. <laughs> but it's so fun. It's so fun, and I love to teach, and I love to share. You know, my passion with with everyone, with the community, you know, people that are just like, oh, what is this? It's a new experience. And I love that. All right. I'll be in your next class. I promise. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yay. Well, it is so good to see you. Um, like I said, I did my hair and makeup for you today. Me too. Look. <laughs> like, I haven't done my hair in so long. I'm like, wow. Me too. Just for you, Petra. <laughs> Same, same for me. I was like, okay, everybody, because we are four in, the, in our home now. I'm, I like my, uh, like I have to take time now to make uh, myself beautiful. So don't even bother like uh, coming close to me. I have to just like <laughs> do hair, makeup, and everything. <laughs> well, you look beautiful. And, you too. Um, Thank you. If anyone is not yet following you on social media uh, to see the most gorgeous toe point ever in the whole world, where can they <laughs> find you? Uh, at Petra Conti. That's my Instagram handle. And my website is www.petraconti.com. Very easy. <laughs> just my name and last name, Petra Conti. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you so much for joining me. I so appreciate it. Thank that. you so much. This is awesome. Thank you. Uh, thank and you. I cannot wait to see you in person and be able to give you a hug. Me too. Me too. <laughs> thank you so much. All right. Take care. All right. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. And Bye. don't forget to check out uh, more dance news at dancedishwithkv.com. Thank you, Petra. Bye. Ciao.